Okay, uh, members of council, everyone, uh, it's joined in. We are now. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning, rather. Um, I understand that state law currently requires that the following announcement be made at the beginning of every remote public hearing as follows. Due to the current public health emergency, city council committees are currently meeting remotely. We are using Microsoft Teams to make these remote hearings possible. Instructions for how the public may view and offer public testimony at public hearings of council committees are included in the public hearing notices that are published in the Daily News, Inquirer, and Legal Intelligencer prior to the hearings and can also be found on phlcouncil.com. I now note that the hour has come. Mr. Weiss, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Um, members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Councilwoman Bass. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for uh, uh, having the hearing and um, Chairwoman Garthier, I look forward uh, to today's hearings. Uh, you know, it's been a very tough week here in Philadelphia, and I particularly look forward to uh, addressing some of the issues uh, that we have had as members of council with uh, procedurally the way we have handled um, some of these matters and the way we're going to be proceeding in the future. So I look forward to uh, I know uh, your statement on these matters and uh, looking forward to uh, finding new ways to work with my colleagues as we address some of the internal mechanisms that are necessary. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Dom. Uh, present and I'm in support of Councilwoman Bass's statement. Council Member Jones. Councilmember, I think you're on mute. Um, maybe we move on while he he tries to adjust. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I'm here. All right. Uh, and, um, thank you for being patient with my technical difficulties, and I look forward to in inspiring debate about legitimate issues. This has happened before and will happen again. Great. Council member Gilmore Richardson. Good morning, I'm here, thank you. Council member Quinones Sanchez. Good morning, thank you chair lady for your patience and thank you for all your hard work over the last uh, week. Thank you. Uh, Council member Squilla. Hi, I'm here, everybody, and uh, looking forward to working with you all to uh, help the people who are at most in need during this crisis. Thank you. Council Member Brooks. I'm here. Thank you. Um, a quorum of the committee is present, and this hearing is now called to order. I also want to acknowledge the presence of Councilmember Gim at this time. Um, the council member is not a member of the committee, but as a sponsor of two bills before this committee today, she has been invited to make comments during the hearing and ask questions of witnesses. The council member will not take part in the public meeting at the conclusion of the public hearing. This is the continuation of the public hearing and public meeting of the Committee on Housing, Neighborhood Development, and the Homeless regarding bill numbers 200294, 200295, 200301, 200302, 200304, and 200305, which was held on May 29th, 2020 and recessed um, until today. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you to all my colleagues for being here and to all who are watching um, the hearing from home and thanks who, to all who came here to testify today. 
Um, it's not an exaggeration to say that the days since our last hearing have been some of the most eventful and, and painful in decades. The senseless murder of George Floyd at the hands of the Minnesota police officers has sparked righteous anger um, and protesters have taken to the streets in our city um, and in all 50 states as well as in countries around the world. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, a crisis that here in the United States is disproportionately infecting and killing black people, um, seeing a black life taken with such disregard and disrespect by an agent of the state charged with protecting us was a spark that reignited a movement. Um, a movement against police brutality and against the systems of oppression that have stalked black people in this country for generations. And housing is an area where the effects of this oppression are crystal clear. Before this crisis even began, Philadelphia had the fourth highest eviction rate in the country. Um, one out of 14 of our renters faces eviction each year. Um, and black renters were twice as likely to get evicted as white renters. And 70% uh, percent of the people evicted from their homes were women of color. And, and so now consider the economic impact that COVID-19 is having on our communities of color. Tens of thousands of Philadelphians have filed for unemployment since mid-March, and we know that job losses are concentrated um, in the low end of wage distribution among mostly Black and Latino workers um, who are more likely to rent their homes. And so what all of this tells us is that unless we act, um, unless we intervene, Black Philadelphians will bear the brunt of an unprecedented, uh, unprecedented wave of evictions once emergency orders are lifted and the courts reopen. And so the bills we're here to vote on today, the Emergency oh. Housing Protection Act, aims to keep people safe and healthy in their homes, ensure landlords get paid, and reduce strain on city resources. They give renters struggling as a result of this crisis time and protection while putting their lives back together so that they don't have the traumatic threat of homelessness hanging over their heads day after day. Um, as elected officials in this period of upheaval, we have a unique opportunity to affect change here. Legislation is among the most powerful tools we have to combat structural racism, and we should leverage it today. Um, council members, Gim, Brooks, and I um, are the ones, are, are the chief um, sponsors of this legislation, but we have many co-sponsors. And I wanted to take a minute um, to just thank um, all of our co-sponsors um, and everyone else on the committee today that has worked with us to get this legislation in, in the best place and the strongest place that we can get it to. Um, to this point. Uh, and so a lot of the times, you know, what the public doesn't see um, is the work that happens behind uh, closed doors um, as we're as we're working on um, and putting the finishing touches on legislation. And so I want to commend um, the tremendous work done by Council Member Kenyona Sanchez, who has acted you know, since since we've started on this legislation as a bridge between um, the chief sponsors and the real estate community, um, I want to thank um, Council Member Gilmore Richardson, um, who has talked to us extensively about every one of these bills um, and and uh, worked with us um, on our amendments. Um, and I want to thank everybody on the committee for getting to where we are today. Um, I also, you know, we're in a heated time in the city and across the country, um, and we're hearing every day from members of the public. We've gotten thousands of, of emails um, over the past a uh, week or so um, about people's passions on police brutality and, and on the city budget. Um, but, you know, I want to encourage us to have um, respectful conversations. And I also want to emphasize that on this committee and on council, we are colleagues and we are working together um, for the benefit of all of our mutual constituents in, in the city. Um, I also want to say that we've done a tremendous amount of outreach um, in getting these bills together. We've talked to pro numerous property owners and landlord associations. We've talked to legal aid organizations with activists, um, with renters, um, with court officials, with faith leaders. Um, and, you know, so last week we winded up holding this hearing because we wanted everyone to have 
an adequate opportunity for feedback um, and an adequate opportunity um, to digest the, the amendments. Um, and this week, I, I truly feel that we've done the work um, to really have a substantive conversation um, and hopefully um, a successful vote. And so, um, you know, I just want to say that this is a moment with everything going on in our city that calls for bold, um, compassionate, and progressive action. And so I hope um, for the sake of Philadelphia's renters, um, and especially for the sake of our black renters, um, that we can deliver them a, a win today. So thank you so very much. Um, and at this point, I also want to open up first to Councilmember Jones for any opening remarks and then to other members of the committee. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. Briefly said, um, I've been around now for uh, sessions uh, each time we get reelected. There is not a session where meaningful legislation doesn't cause some agita, some confrontation, some dialogue, and even debate. So this is what it is about. As long as at the end of it, it makes a difference for the public. So thank you, Madam Chair, for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Are there any other members of the committee who would like to make opening remarks? Okay. Um, let's see, Mr. Weiss, will you please read the titles of the bills? Bill number 200294, an ordinance amending the various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for an eviction diversion program and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 200295, an ordinance amending the various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for temporary eviction relief and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 200301, an ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for temporary rent stabilization and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 200302, an ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for the temporary waiver of certain fees and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 200304, an ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing, including providing for relief to tenants who have been illegally locked out of their residences and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Bill number 200305, an ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for payment agreements for tenants with a certified financial hardship related to COVID-19 and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Thank you. Um, before we begin to hear testimony from the witnesses we have for today, um, everyone who has been invited to the meeting to testify should be aware that this public hearing is being recorded. Because the hearing is public, participants and viewers have no reasonable expectation of privacy. By continuing to be in the meeting, you are consenting to being recorded. Additionally, prior to recognizing members for um, the questions or comments they have for witnesses, I will note for the record at this time that we will use the chat feature available in Microsoft Teams to allow members to signify that they wish to be recognized. In order to comply with the Sunshine Act, the chat feature must only be used for this purpose. Mr. Weiss, will you please call the first panel or witness we have to testify this morning? Rashida Phillips and Brianna Westbrooks. Um, 
Good afternoon. Um, are you both connected and ready to proceed? Yes, I'm here. This is Rashida Phillips. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Um, please state. Uh, please proceed with your testimony. Good morning, everybody. My name is Rashida Phillips. I'm Senior Advocate Resources and Training Attorney at Shriver Center on Poverty Law for the next few weeks and soon to return to serve as Managing Attorney of Housing Policy at Community Legal Services. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Today I'm testifying from a hotel room after my electricity has been out for over two days due to the storm where my family lost hundreds of dollars of groceries and which tri triggered health issues for me and a few of my neighbors due to lack of fans and air conditioners. While I'm fortunate to have the privilege to access other means of shelter when something goes wrong at home, I speak today on behalf of thousands of other Philadelphians, particularly renters who do not have the means to access additional supports when an emergency, be it loss of power or global pandemic, threatens their safety and housing stability. The EHPA recognizes that the only way Philadelphians can stay safe and stay home during a global pandemic is if they have homes to go to. And so its protections work to ensure families aren't put out of their homes and into circumstances where they are exposed and vulnerable due to global events beyond anyone's control. The legislation recognizes that when these families become more exposed and more vulnerable during this pandemic, that means that each of us are a little more exposed as a city, given how the disease spreads. With a large number of pending evictions, the threat of mass reinfection as people cannot find shelter, and the threat of a second wave of the virus um, signaling the need to shut down our economy again. This package of legislation is balanced and well designed to work in tandem to avoid those risks and to ensure that people have a fair chance at getting back on track. It's also the shortest path to safety and health for all of us during this time. Bill 200-295 extends the eviction moratorium for a reasonable time period, 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. Through the statewide eviction moratorium, um, or, I'm sorry, though the city, citywide eviction moratorium will end on July 10th, COVID-19 is working with a vastly different timeline, one that's unpredictable at best. Given the protests, the easing up of stay-at-home orders, the lovely weather we've been having, it is quite possible that we will see a resurgence in cases in the next few weeks. Furthermore, we know that it will take several months for employers to recover and that they will not be able to hire staff back immediately. Low-wage workers and others who have not been able to work from home will need to grapple with the transition back to steady income and all that comes along with that. Inconsistent bus routes, finding a functioning child care or care for older kids out of school, etc. Bill 200-304 recognizes that hundreds of illegal lockouts are still occurring despite the eviction moratorium, where landlords who cannot access the courts push people out of their homes. It also recognizes the significant public health risk that evictions bring with it, particularly illegal, illegal lockouts at this time, where people are unable to access masks, medication, or other essential items to help them avoid infection, and at a time where they may be less credit worthy for an application, unable to gather security deposits or access their old security deposits. Those 20305 and 229 expand the tenant and landlord's options to negotiate and attempt to find resolutions that work for both sides. The bill recognizes that unit turnover and bringing in new people to a unit during this time is full of unknowns and potentially disastrous, and that litigation is time-consuming and costly. Understanding that a landlord's most sure path to accessing future rents is to just stick with the tenant that they have and try to work through the crisis together. It gives both parties the benefits of time without taking away any rights of the landlord to move forward should the conciliation not work out. And finally, Bill 200-301 simply ensures that landlords do not take advantage of tenants by engaging in a form of unconscionable price gouging during a time when tenants have reduced power and fewer options to negotiate. Rent stabilization is not rent control. It's a temporary measure that responsible cities should take and normally do when a disaster or emergency happens in order to ensure fairness and reasonableness. Um, see California Penal Code 396. Um, so quickly, I'll, I'll end it just by saying that as Philadelphia grapples with legacies of systemic racism related to policing, and before that, the devastating impacts that COVID-19 has had on black and brown communities in particular. I recognize that COVID-19 has stolen much from every single one of us, but for some, it has exacted an even more devastating toll on their lives and livelihoods. And we find ourselves as a city and community having to consider questions that we never had to before, all with urgency, sensitivity, and balance. What unites us now is that we all deserve a home and that we all love this city. Passing this act ensures that many of us can continue to call the city home and can help it start the process of healing and rebuilding. So I urge you all to pass this act. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, Brianna, are you there and connected? Yes, council member. I am. <laughs> Wonderful. Please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony. 
Okay. Um, hello, Chairperson Gaudier, Vice Chair Jones, and Council Members Bass, Brooks, Dom, Gilmore Richardson, Keona Sanchez, and Squilla. Uh, my name is Brianna Westbrooks, and I'm representing the Pennsylvania Apartment Association today. Um, but out of respect for your busy calendars and your overwhelming competing priorities right now, um, we have agreed to combine our testimony and therefore today I'm also speaking on behalf of the Building Owners and Managers Association, Development Workshop, the Greater Philadelphia Association of Realtors, and the Homeowners Association of Philadelphia. But before I get into any sort of policy analysis or commentary, I kind of want to begin by acknowledging the pain, the anguish, and the hurt that we are all feeling right now. The pandemic coupled with the events of this past week have been particularly poignant. And on a personal note, I can't even begin to articulate the conversations that I've had with fellow, particularly black colleagues and black friends about, I guess, the difficulties that we're going through right now. Um, and with that said, the leadership exhibited by members of this committee throughout all of this should also be commended. Um, balancing budget hearings, the legislation that is in front of you today, and tending to the immediate needs of your constituents is a huge and daunting task. And with the challenges that lie ahead, we believe continued dialogue and collaboration is absolutely imperative. And with this in mind, I am offering our organization's thoughts on these bills. But again, before we go into policy analysis, I would like to recognize the offices of council members Brooks, Gaudier, and Gim for having a discussion uh, this past week about proposed amendments to this legislation. We would particularly like to thank the chair of this committee and her staff for working to have a continued dialogue um, that extended beyond uh, the scheduled ones we had. Um, in general, the organizations that make up uh, this group of real estate organizations support the intent of the package of bills, which is to assure that Philadelphians impacted by COVID-19 have stability during an unprecedented crisis. We believe that through our conversations, we have been able to build consensus around important components of this legislation. The definitions for certification of hardship and COVID-19 financial hardship have been altered. Although we would like to see a little bit more requirements included with these definitions, we do recognize that they are at a more reasonable place now. We also acknowledge that most of the legislation now applies only to Philadelphians who are experiencing a COVID-19 related hardship. And we also recognize that these changes are a result of an increasingly collaborative process and we do appreciate these amendments. We still have some concerns that I will outline briefly and we hope that there will be continued uh, opportunities to work on them. So after reviewing these proposed amendments, we would like to see the emergency order defined in these bills uh, more closely aligned with pre-existing law. Uh, the governor has an executive order that places an eviction moratorium lasting until July 10th, and we believe that this date should kind of remain consistent throughout these bills. Um, the governor's eviction moratorium also only applies to non-payment of rent, and we believe that this same concept should apply throughout this legislative package, but particularly in Bill 2002. 295, which is the eviction moratorium bill. Also, we believe the waiving of late fees should last through the defined emergency period, but not any longer, which is in reference to Bill 200302. And we would also like to see an important change in a payment plan legislation. Um, as it is currently written, a property owner would not have any recourse for a resident who fails to meet the requirements of an agreed payment plan until the resident is four months behind. Um, we think that's too much time, and we think there should be a mechanism to make sure that both parties are promptly held accountable for upholding both ends of the payment plan agreement. Um, I do have to say we still strongly remain unified in our opposition to Bill 200301, which would enact rent stabilization in Philadelphia. Um, the impacts of rent control, such as the provisions in this legislation, um, we believe have been well studied and documented. They lead to higher rents in the long term devalued properties, stymie development of new housing supply, and it also could lead to less uh, investment in housing upkeep and updates, which is really important in Philadelphia, considering our housing stock is considerably older in comparison to other cities. Um, the amendments to this legislation that are in front of you today are a result of a constructive dialogue. We believe that with continued conversations and consideration of our suggestions above, this legislation could strike a balance between all interested stakeholders. In fact, we are supportive of bills 200295, 302, 
304 and 305 moving out of committee since we understand that we are all in unprecedented times. But we would also appreciate additional time to have more discussions about the concerns that we still have that I listed before. Um, we look forward to continued collaboration with the bill sponsors and members of this committee uh, to ensure that policy solutions moving forward are able to support Philadelphia residents while also keeping small and large local business owners in mind. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions from members of the committee for these witnesses? Madam Chair, this is yeah. Sanchez. Thank you, um, Madam Chair, and thank you, Brianna, so much um, for all your work over the last week with all of the bill sponsors. Um, we appreciate it, um, and we appreciate um, the, the industry's understanding of the unprecedented times that we are in. And ultimately, as I think as Rashida said, their best tenant is the one they have, and we are committed to working with you to keep people in their homes and through this budget process, get the money necessary so that we can help people stay in their homes. And then that way we will help renters and landlords. Um, I have a question for Rashida. I'm, I'm glad to hear you're coming back in the 10,000 emails that I got. I found yours. Uh, so I appreciate it so much. And I'm glad you're coming back to CLS um, to do some work with us. One of my concerns with all of this has always been the courts. And you've done so much work with the courts. What if, what if any indications are you getting? We're all concerned about the courts. Um, and one of the things that worked with the mortgage um uh, foreclosure program was that we had Judge Rizzo, who was personally invested and personally committed. What are the one or two or three things we need to ask the courts to make sure that this diversion program can work from the lessons we learned from mortgage foreclosure from your lane in this conversation? You guys are our front facing folks. You're the ones that provide the protection and the legal representation. If you had your, your say, what are the couple of things, and maybe if it's just one, that we need to make sure the courts are on board with. Great question. I think um, if I had, I mean, you know, all of them are, are extremely important, and again, they're interconnected and work together. Um, I think what this will call on the courts to do is to slow down some of its processes, right? And, um, you know, that's a difficult thing to ask right now when they are in the midst of having to slow down. But I think what this calls for, right, we're in unprecedented times where we don't know, you know, even though these orders may live, court procedures are not going to be the same. They're not going to work the same. If we still have to do, you know, court hearings over Zoom, there's now not as many people in the courtroom as, as there used to be, all of these kinds of things, there's not the same capacity, right? Um, so there may be an interest from the court to figure out or to have some strategies for how they can slow down some of these processes and move people through um, in a way that's fair and equitable and, and making sure that people's rights aren't, aren't um, being delegated in some way um, by, by the way that we've had to change things. There is already a mediation um, program in place in court um, already, but it, it requires that you pass by with something um, in order to get to access that. Um, and so if we can create a mediation program that kind of cuts out, you know, some of those, some of that process and, and, and um, will help the court in terms of their capacity to deal with cases that are actually filed and, and actually need mediation in that instance, um, I think that would be helpful. I think maybe even welcome um, for them to, to, to take some of that pressure off of the court um, around mediation. So I think those, those are the ones that I would uplift um, out of all of these. But again, I think they all work together. And I think, um, you know, you have to engage the courts in a conversation to see what, what is best for them in terms of how they move forward. But none of this, in terms of, you know, my experience feels impossible. Um, it just requires some you know, some slowing down and, and, and a lot of conversations and communication. Thank you, Rashida. I know this council is committed to making sure that we can restore some of the housing counseling money and ultimately, like I said, the money to help people pay their bills. We appreciate your partnership and look forward to working with you on it. Are there, are there any other questions or comments from members of the committee? Councilmember Jones. Welcome back, Rashida. Thank you so much. Glad to be back. Is that it? Okay. <laughs> Councilmember Gim, did you have any questions? None for me. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. And thank you to our witnesses and their and their cooperation and collaboration on these bills. Thank you. Thank you.
Wonderful. Um, Mr. Weiss, will you please call the next panel or witness to testify? Uh, Reverend Gregory Holston and Victoria Lambert. Good morning. Good morning. Can you please state your name for the record and proceed with your testimony? Uh, my name is Reverend Gregory Holston. I'm the senior pastor of Jane's Memorial United Methodist Church in the Germantown section of Philadelphia. Um, obviously, we are in uh, really difficult times. Um, has already been laid out, but I want to touch on it again. Uh, this city before COVID-19 had already been suffering a 25% poverty rate, as many of you know. Uh, we've already were one of the uh, fourth uh, leading places in terms of, uh, of renting. We already were experiencing a great deal of unemployment. Some of the sections in Philadelphia we're experiencing 50% unemployment rates and 60% poverty rates. Um, we already were experiencing uh, so much pain as, as a city. Uh, one of the highest incarceration rates in the country. 40% um, of our children, studies have shown, go to bed hungry every night. There are sections in the city of Philadelphia where 30 to 40% of our children have asthma. Um, and into all of that, all of those difficulties. And also, I should say, we are uh, one of the fastest gentrifying cities in the country. We are one of the places in which uh, people, poor people, mostly black and brown people, are being moved out of their communities, moved out of the city. Um, and so that's all before COVID-19. And now with COVID-19, we, we, are, we are recognizing that 1,200 people have already lost their lives uh, 20% of, of, of the people in the state are African-American who have lost their lives. Um, we recognize that we are almost experiencing something completely unprecedented. Uh, someone described it as the, uh, the 1918 pandemic plus the 1929 depression plus the 1968 uh, um, uh, protests and riots after King's death. We experienced all of them at the same time. And so in these unprecedented times, you cannot do business as usual. In these unprecedented times where uh, over one in three Pennsylvanians have actually uh, filed for unemployment and it's, uh, our unemployment rate is skyrocketing because of it, uh, where some of our unions in our city, almost 100% of the union members are not working. Almost 100% of them are not working. I would no guarantee that they will get their job back. Across the United States, four out of 10 people making $40,000 or less uh, lost their jobs over the last two months. We are in incredible times. And to go across West Philadelphia in the last couple of days after the rioting and the, the, the looting that occurred and the look at the 52nd Street corridor and the look at the Parkside uh, shop riot in the Parkside uh, Lowe's and and what happened on 22nd Street and other places in our town, uh, we are in incredibly severe times. Our schools are closed. Uh, they are not only just schools, but they're rec centers, they're community centers. Uh, they're where young people uh, meet uh, adults and connect with adults. Uh, and, and that whole process of growing and learning comes from that. We are experiencing incredible spikes in our gun violence as are these young people who have been cooped up into homes and houses for, for uh, much of the last two months are now coming out and some violence is occurring because of it. Summer jobs have been reduced. Uh, workforce development has been reduced. Uh, and so all of these things are converging at the same time uh, in, a, in a whirlwind in our city and producing things that we have not expected to happen and we can't even anticipate all of what will happen over the next couple of months because we've never seen these circumstances all come together at the same time. And so here is a piece of legislation that can actually stabilize something. Here's a piece of legislation that could do a little bit to stabilize one area in a whirlwind of issues that 
families are destabilized in, where no school, no church, no no none of the institutions that we know are important. Here is one place that we can say we can keep this state. In fact, the the the, the orders that have been placed for for the last couple of months told us to do this like everyone has this. It would say stay at home. Not everybody has a home. And right now, if we don't do something, many people will lose the very place that we've been telling them to stay at for the next couple of months. So I, I, I just want to say, and I know I got to stop, but I, I really want to say I want to encourage you to find ways. I'm, I'm good to hear that the real estate associations are agreeing now on four of these bills. I'm glad to hear that. I don't believe that the other bill rec uh, uh, destabilization or uh, rate rent stabilization is something that you cannot find agreement on in the short term. We're only talking about a couple of months. You know, we're not talking about stabilization for the next two, three, five years. You should be able to find some kind of agreement on that. And the fact that a diversion program has not been created, look, you're in an emergency. You're going to be creating new stuff. You're not going to know all the stuff you need to create. All right, so just go ahead and do it and figure it out as you're going forward because we need leadership now to move forward to stabilize the one place you can stabilize, and that is the homes of the people and the children of our community. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that testimony, especially for stressing that all of these measures that we're talking about are temporary measures in the face of a pandemic. Thank you. Um, Victoria, can you state your name for the record and please proceed with your, your testimony? I think you might be on mute. Hi, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good morning. Um, peace and blessings, Madam Chair and council members and friends. <clears throat> I'm humbled by the opportunity. I, I'm to just, speak. I, I need you to state your name for the just so we have that on record, and then you can begin again. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning. My name is Victoria Lambert, and um, I wanted to just say peace and blessings to you, Madam Chair, uh, Council members, and friends. Um, I'm really humbled by the opportunity to speak to you again today. Um, and just to recap, uh, I'm Victoria Lambert, I do reside in the third district. Uh, my son and I share a humble studio apartment in 46 in Chester. Uh, one of the perks of our apartment is uh, free cardio. Uh, it's a fourth floor walk up. And um, my first apartment was in 1997 on 41st in Baltimore. Um, and we're going to jump forward to today. And we, there was a housing crisis then, but now we're really dealing with an urgent housing crisis. Um, and that's why I'm really here to talk to you, to share my thought and ask you to please consider passing this group of bills, um, the Emergency Housing Protection Act. Uh, it's really important, and I, I like that they're all grouped together. I think it makes good sense. I'm extremely concerned that the relevance and the importance of these bills will be downplayed. Um, and you know what? We can no longer downplay the realities. And, and I personally am really tired of normalizing the abnormal. Like, this has got to stop. Um, and this over time is detrimental to my health, my financial health, my family health. And, you know, paying rent seems like such a perfectly normal thing to do, but it becomes like a Herculean task. How do I address the deficit when what I got versus what I need to pay are nowhere near each other? And I'm not sure really quickly about these 2 million jobs that I read about this morning, but my job wasn't one of them 2 million that they're including and saying this, this, this we have now. And 
Last week, I told my story here. Um, but to remind you, I do currently face eviction. Uh, and it is because of the COVID emergency. Um, I was current on my rent until the pandemic. I lost my job as a hostess in a restaurant. Uh, seven days later, I reached out to my landlord, um, you know, to say I was worried and concerned. And my response was a letter notifying me that I was going to be evicted. It was a notice to vacate letter from an attorney, a form letter. And um, when the courts open, I, they're going to push forward with evicting me and my son. And... <sighs> An eviction moratorium will really help people like me to have time to get back to work and to heal financially. Um, and with regard to payment agreements, it would be so good if the landlords would listen um, to the tenants and create a win-win situation. Um, we really need the eviction diversion program for the same reason. We need to help people get back and like catch up to themselves. Now we're talking, but the money clock is ticking. And as an update in, in my own effort to be proactive at a time when really the only constant we have is change and upheaval. Um, I've scheduled a direct deposit um, to my landlord for my account. And I also have um, an, an additional money order. Um, we really need rent stabilization because raising rent during this crisis is so detrimental to tenants who need to catch up on what we already owe. We need a waiver of late fees. And the, these fees, like they, they hike you into a worse place. Um, they, they put you deeper. Uh, we had once in our whole time, we had a two bedroom apartment in Morris Park and they raised the rent every year for four years. Um, finally, when it became unrealistic, uh, I, I chose not to fight anymore and I moved out and I just felt confident that we could find another place. Um, and that turned into 172 days of homelessness with no roof and no real address, working consistently. And I mean, we put our stuff in storage. I don't know if you've ever had to pay for storage, but it's a horrible pressure. Um, and landlords worry about the profitability of their portfolios. You should see my portfolio. And while we tenants are dealing with increasing rents, um, and it's so hard to move away from unfair rent increases during regular times. And this, I mean, we, irregular is really not even a word to describe what we're dealing with now. Um, but in regular times, rent increases are often unjustified. Um, and the new challenges of COVID, they're, they're really they're getting ready to make our eviction rate even higher. Like, wow, we're going to be leading the nation in eviction soon. Um, and again, I must remind you of the deficit of hope. The deficit of hope that people are experiencing. And I'm just going to have to, to ask that you begin to, to wrap up. But, but I thank you so much. Two sentences. Thank you. Um, my son, Preyton, is really proud that I could talk to you today. But he doesn't have any faith that any of this is going to come to fruition. And um, I showed him a mustard seed. He's like, Miss Mom, I don't even have that much faith. So I'm going to ask you all to ask, help me think about what I should tell him. Should I tell him that in 80 days and 46 seconds there'll be some kind of relief and somebody won't have their landlord foot on us and i thank you humbly for your time i bid you all well health thank you thank you so much for your testimony um are there any questions for these witnesses from members of the committee this is sanchez i i just want to thank 
Miss Victoria. Um, I didn't thank her last week. We were delayed and just know that I have relayed your story in the explanation to people um, why we have to come to a successful resolution today. I don't want your son believing that we, we're we not here to do the people's business. And I just want you to thank you because your story has been incredibly powerful. It has moved me and it has touched me. And it reminds people that when we're talking about legislation, it's not numbers. There are people behind us. So I appreciate it. And I always appreciate Reverend Halston. Please pray for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions or comments from members of the committee? Yes, council member. <laughs> you know, I, I know you want me to use the, the chat feature. <laughs> I'm old school. I wave my hand. I'm in class. <laughs> yeah, I can dig it. Reverend, um, always, you have a way of putting stats um, to human humanity. Um, and uh, we appreciate this input so that we can kind of connect the dots where we should. And so we leave it to you to always kind of be our Jiminy Cricket, uh, if you would, in a conscious of counsel. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from our committee? Okay. Um, there being no further questions from members of the committee and no other witnesses to testify, I will ask if there's anyone else present in this hearing whose name we have failed to call um, and that wishes to offer testimony on any of the bills being considered today. Hearing none, um, I want to thank all the panels and witnesses um, for your participation today. We so value your opinions. Um, and I now invite um, all panels and witnesses to please disconnect from the meeting before we go into our public meeting. We will pause the proceedings briefly as multiple participants leave the meeting. Thank you so very much. Have all the witnesses um, stepped away? Yes, they have. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Um, this concludes uh, the public hearing of the committee. We will now recess um, until. Uh, well, let's give it a half an hour. So we'll recess until 1.10, at which time we will convene the public meeting to consider the action to be taken on the bills before this committee today. Um, okay, so I will see you all back here in a half an hour, 1.10. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Are we ready? Okay, we're now live. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we will now convene the, the public meeting. Mr. Weiss, will you please call the roll to take attendance? Members that are in attendance will please indicate that you are present when your name is called. Also, please say a few brief words when responding so that your image will be displayed on screen when you speak. Councilmember Bass. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman. Councilmember Brooks. Good afternoon. 
Council Member Dom. Good afternoon, everyone. Council Member Jones. Good afternoon, members and Madam Chair. Council Member Gilmore Richardson. Good afternoon, I'm here. Council Member Quinona Sanchez. Good afternoon, present. Council Member Squilla. All right, Matt, take care. Let me give, give me that and I'll, I'll take care of it. Yeah, Bill, thanks. Um, okay. Um, thank you so much. Um, before we go into voting, I wanted to give an opportunity to um, Council Members Kim mm -hmm. and Council Member uh, Council Member Brooks um, to talk about uh, their most recent amendments. Council Member Kim, please proceed. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And um, I also would like to really thank all the council committee members for their significant efforts in uh, feedback, improving the bill and making it stronger and also making sure that we do things right. Um, in particular, I hope that uh, people will take a look at the fact that in just uh, less than a month, um, thousands of evictions could be scheduled in landlord tenant court. Um, we heard the call to make sure that it is clear about uh, any kind of moratorium ending, but we're also very clear that we're probably not prepared as a city, um, as a health matter, to be able to um, see so many evictions go through court. So the eviction moratorium has a hard stop of August 31st, um, 2020. It will not continue beyond that. Um, we've also made significant adjustments to the, um, to the diversion program. It is now uh, time limited uh, instead of 45 days. It's been reduced down now to 30 days. It will go hand in hand with the payment and with the installment payment plan um, so that those two will run concurrent with one another and they will not be seen as like following one another or causing any additional delays that, that harm people. Um, most importantly, I think it's uh, it needs to be clear that the diversion law will be conditional on the program being set up and fully funded by the city of Philadelphia. This law will only go into effect if the city has established and funded the program. And right now we are working together with more than almost two dozen individuals who are working together on a diversion program working group that includes, as you heard last week, um, certainly members uh, from Judge Rizzo to uh, uh, members of the court to um, our uh, a number of, of folks from the landlord uh, industry yeah. associations, as well as uh, our legal actors and advocates. So this is uh, a, a, bit, a major effort. It also includes members of our city agencies as well. So this will be a major effort. Um, it is not our intention uh, to have people be held accountable to programs that don't exist. So the diversion law is only in effect if the program is actually in existence and funded by the city. So I hope that clarifies things for my colleagues. And I also just want to express my gratitude uh, to colleagues, especially uh, to, um, you know, to members, Council Member Squilla and uh, Gilmore Richardson and Quinona Sanchez had a lot to do with um, ensuring that there was clarity and um, responsibility around all of these bills. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. Thank you so much, Council Member Brooks. Yes, thank you so much, Madam Chair. I would like to put on record um, that we have circulated um, additional amendments to shorten the length of Bill 200301, the rent stabilization bill to six months. Um, and there are a few other amendments that I would like to talk about. Um, both the rent stabilization bill and the late waiver um, originally applied to all tenants. Um, and they now only apply to renters with a COVID-19 related financial hardship. Um, and then the rent stab stabilization bill originally lasted for one year after the COVID-19 emergency period. Um, and it now has been shortened to six months, like I said prior. Um, and after discussions with the affordable housing providers, PHA, subsidized housing is now exempt from rent stabilization because those residences have already been subject to strict rent rate uh, regulations. So I circle these around to my colleagues um, just to get additional support to move it forward. And I, I too just want to thank 
my colleagues for helping me process and move this around. This is my first piece of legislation that's moving through um, council and committee. So I appreciate those that helped me fine tune and craft it as well as um, helping me go through this process in a way that um, is still meaningful for council and for the citizens of Philadelphia. So thank you so much. Great, thank you. Um, all right, um, I wanna recognize council member Jones for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200. I have a question still, one more. I put it on the uh, chat room. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. <laughs> thank you, and again, I wanna thank all of the bill sponsors for all of their work in this, particularly in this last week. I just have one more, you know, as I've told Councilwoman, Councilmember uh, Gim, I have one more clarifying question that I want for the record. Um, I think it is important, you know, I'm very uncomfortable about voting something mandatory, an unfunded mandate if we're not gonna fund it. And I'm very, very much committed to um, fighting over the next couple of weeks for money so that we know um, that we are going to be able to deliver on a commitment so we're not making a commitment to people and then not following through on the money. Um, do you have any idea how much the program will cost? And if not, can you at least commit to, to members that before a final vote, we will have some idea of that and at least work with you on getting the administration to make some sort of commitment as part of our budget process? Yes, absolutely, Council Member. Um, it would be great uh, to to to. I just I, my most ideal thing would allow us to have the diversion working group come together first, just because they represent such a wide range of experiences, um, including our industry uh, organizations as well as our courts. Um, and then I'd be happy to get back with you for a final number. And I absolutely, absolutely appreciate your partnership in ensuring that this program is funded uh, responsibly because we want things that work. We don't want to pass things for the sake of passing them. So thank you. So do you think you'll have a roundabout number for my colleagues? What, you know, as a member of the housing committee, I have a responsibility to the rest of the members who are gonna vote for this based on us voting it out of committee. Um, that we're ensuring that we've reached a consensus and we have idea where this is going. Um, can you at least commit to give people a roundabout number so that they feel comfortable when we ask them to vote for this on final passage? Absolutely. I will commit to giving everybody a final number um, that is fully agreed upon by all committee members involved. And it should, it should involve our administration. Um, we want to make sure, again, that the funding is there um, it is not an enormous program. It is not going to cost in the tens of millions of dollars at all, but it is. Uh, it does need to be funded. And I do think that there are resources to do it. So thank you. And you will have that number before final passage. Thank you. Thank you, um, Council Member Brooks, Councilwoman Gautier, and Councilwoman, Council Member Gim for working with all of us um, over the last week. It's been a trying time for everybody. Emotions are high, um, but we still are able to get the people's business done. And I appreciate all of the accommodations you've made to the industry and to all of us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I want to recognize Councilmember Jones for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200294. Thank you, Madam Chair. I offer an amendment to bill number 200294. A copy of this amendment has been circulated to the members of the committee, and therefore I move uh, that uh, the amendment to bill number 200294 be approved. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number. It has been moved now and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number two zero zero two nine. Can, can, can we get the subtitles of the bills with the numbers, please? Um. Okay. Let me. Um. Sorry. Let me pull that up. I don't have it in front of me. As of yet. Neither do I. I'm sorry. We have. That is okay. Um, I sent everyone a fact sheet. Um, I emailed that around. That might be a handy document. Um, it also has the numbers on it. Madam Chair, 30304 
is the illegal lockout bill that you sponsored, 200304. That's not... This, the bill that we are amending is 200294. Oh, okay. I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. That's the 294 is the eviction diversion program that was sponsored by Council Member Gim. Give me two seconds, guys. Council Member Gilmore Richardson, that is correct. 294 is about diversion. We're, I'm going to read the numbers, and then Max is going to read the title as I read the after I read the number. Okay, okay. Um. Okay. The chair recognizes Council Member Jones for a motion on the amendment to Bill Number two zero zero two nine four. Max, can you just clarify, uh, Mr. Weiss? Can you just clarify which bill that is? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an ordinance amending various sections of the code to address matters related to the landlord-tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus the 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for an eviction diversion program and making certain technical changes under certain terms and conditions. Okay, council member. Would you like me to read the entire amendment thing again? I'll, that's not a problem. Yes. Yeah, so Okay. You have to move in the, in the second. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, it has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200294 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries, and the amendment to bill number 200294 has been approved. Um, I want to recognize Council Member Jones for a motion on bill number 200294 as amended. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that bill number 200294 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation. And further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at our next session of council. Second. It has been moved in and moved and properly seconded that bill number 200294 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. The chair recognizes Council Member Jones for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200295. Mr. Weiss, can you uh, read the title um, of that bill? Uh, an ordinance amending various sections of the, of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus, the 2019 pandemic, and otherwise, including providing for temporary eviction relief and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Okay, council member. Second. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I offer an amendment to bill number 200295. A copy of this amendment has been circulated to members of this committee. I move that the amendment to bill number 200295 be approved. Second. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200295 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries and the amendment to bill number 200295 has been approved. Um, council member, um, oh, no, sorry. Um, chair recognizes Council Member Jones for a motion on Bill Number Two Zero Zero Two Nine Five as amended. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I move that Bill Number Two Zero Zero Two Nine Five as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation, and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill 
at our next session of council. All Second. Right. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200-295 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 As opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. I would like to move. I would like to save um, three zero one for the end and move forward uh, with the other bills first. Council Member Jones. Yes, Madam Chair. Okay. The chair recognizes Council Member Jones for a motion on the amendment to Bill Number two zero zero three zero two. And Mr. Weiss, you can read the title of that. An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for the temporary waiver of certain fees and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Council Member Jones. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that uh, an amendment to bill number 200. 302. A copy of this amendment has been circulated to members of this committee. And I move that we amend bill number 200302 uh, be approved. Second. second. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200302 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> the ayes have it. The motion carries, and the am amendment to Bill Number Two Zero Zero Three Zero Two has been approved. The chair recognizes Council Member Jones for a motion on Bill Number Two Zero Zero Three Zero Two as amended. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I move that Bill Number Two Zero Zero. 302 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at our next session of council it has been moved oh, sorry Did we have okay it has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200302 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Those opposed? Okay. Um, the chair recognizes council member in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The chair recognizes council member Jones for a motion on bill number 200304 as amended. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I move that bill number 200304 as amended be approved from this committee with a favorable recommendation and recommend uh, further that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at our next session of council. Second. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200304 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it and the motion carries. 
The chair recognizes council member Jones for a motion on the amendment to bill number 200305. And before, um, but first, can we get Mr. Weiss to read the title of the bill? An ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise, including providing for payment agreements for tenants with a certified financial hardship related to COVID-19 and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. Um, council member. Yes, ma'am. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I offer an amendment to bill number 200305. A copy of this amendment has been circulated to members of this committee and I move for the, uh, I move to adopt the amendment to bill number 200305. Second. Second. It has been moved and properly seconded that um, the amendment to bill number 200305 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries, and the amendment to bill number 200305 um, has been approved. The chair recognizes council member Jones for a motion on bill number 200305 as amended. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I move that bill number 200305 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at our next session of council. It needs to be a second. 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 It has been moved and properly seconded at that bill number 200305 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it, um, the motion ca and the motion carries. Um, now we're going to go back um, to bill number 301. In ordinance amending various sections of the Philadelphia Code to address matters related to the landlord and tenant relationship during the novel coronavirus of 2019 pandemic and otherwise including providing for temporary rent stabilization and making certain technical changes all under certain terms and conditions. The chair recognizes council member Jones for a motion on bill number 200301. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I offer an amendment to bill number 200301. A copy of this amendment has been circulated to members of this committee and I move that the, the amendment uh, be approved. So the bill number, the amendment to bill number 200301 be approved. It has been moved and properly seconded that the amendment to bill number 200301 be approved. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The ayes have it, the motion carries, and the amendment to bill number 200301 has been approved. The chair recognizes council member Jones for a motion on bill number 200301 as amended. Thank you again, Madam Chair. I move that bill number 200301 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to allow first reading at our next session of council. Second. 
it has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200301 as amended be reported from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council all those in favor of the motion will signify Before we go, saying, madam chairwoman yes Madam Chairwoman, thank you very much. And as I said to the to the bill sponsor, and I appreciate her last um, amendment that we received a half an hour ago, I had asked you as the chairperson of this committee to hold this bill. I think it it warranted further discussion. Um, and I'm on, you know, I'm very disappointed that we've gotten to this point where we have worked collaboratively on all these sets of bills, except this one with an amendment that we got a few minutes ago. Um, and um, very unfortunate, and for that reason, I will be voting no. Okay. Um, I felt it was important to bring this bill to the floor. Um, the council member has worked very hard on this bill. People have made their voices um, known in support of this bill. Many, many people that we've heard in this hearing and in the hearing before. And I think it's a part of democracy that it should be brought to the to the floor. So I appreciate um, your concern. I appreciate everything um, that everybody has done. But I did think that it was important um, for me from a values and principle perspective. Forward. It has been moved and probably second. Go ahead. It does another yes. have a comment. Yes, Madam Chair, uh, I also wanted to make a comment, and I think that I would agree with you that um, the bill sponsor has uh, worked very hard. Um, I think that she has only the best of intentions, um, but I am uncomfortable with this bill for a number of different reasons, and um, and uh, don't uh, am not able to support this particular bill. Uh, I'm happy to support five out of the six initiatives. Uh, however, I do think that, um, you know, the the ability to hold this bill until there was further discussion and a little bit more work on it uh, could have really brought a better outcome for all of us. So, unfortunately, I am not going to be able to support this one bill, but out of the total package, uh, I am supporting five of the six uh, bills that uh, have been brought forward. So, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I respect your decision and your perspective. Um, it has been moved and properly seconded that bill number 200301 as amended <clears throat> from this committee with a favorable recommendation and further move that the rules of council be suspended to permit first reading of this bill at the next session of council. All those in favor of the motion will signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? The nays. the nays have it um, and the motion fails. Sorry, let me just find my please. Um, this concludes the business. Oh, I also want to um, make a point on bill number 302. Bill number two zero zero three zero two. The A's, the um, the eyes had it on that bill, and and that will be uh, reported out of the committee. That motion carried. Um, this concludes the business before the committee on housing, neighborhood development, and the homeless today. Um, thank you all very much for your attendance, for your participation, and for getting us to this point. Thank you, and enjoy the rest of your well, afternoon. Stay safe. Thank you, Madam Every Chair. Madam Chair. Yeah. In the comments, I see something from Council Member Don. This is um, he wanted to speak. All right, Council Member. Yes, yes, yes. No, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and thank you to Council Member Gim and Brooks. And I just wanted to comment on the diversion bill. I wanted to thank all of you for your work with uh, I know all of our offices to make that happen. I also want to make sure that we do further work down the road on the okay. eviction records. Um, on expunging eviction records for tenants who enter into payment plans and find other agreements with their landlords after evictions are filed so we can follow up and make sure these records don't follow tenants in future housing. It's very important that if they enter into these agreements, we don't want these blemishes to follow them down the road. So, and thank you all for your work. I just want to make sure we follow up on that. Thanks. Thank you. 
No. All right, everyone. Um, this includes our uh, public meeting. Thank you very Council much. Council member Gautier. Yes, there is. Yes, Council member. <laughs> Just wrote it in the chat. Sorry, I know it's been really difficult. Um, right. First of all, I want to thank um, my colleagues on this committee because um, I think that this has been an incredibly difficult time period to get a lot of work done. It's also incredibly difficult to work remotely. I mean, it's very, very different when we're working on the same floors and the same offices um, and we have a chance to like see each other face to face and not do this remote work, which I think makes it just harder to have really personal and honest conversations with one another. But nevertheless, I want to emphasize how much people gave every single person on the committee gave to this process to get um, the bills, uh, five out of the six bills through. Um, as we head into, uh, you know, the weeks ahead and, you know, we'll do continue to do work um, to get the bill. Being committed uh, to saying, uh, expressing my gratitude uh, to building trust um, and improving our processes so that we can figure out um, how to do this work together. But I know that we wouldn't have reached this point um, to do as much as we did uh, in the last few weeks if it hadn't been for the fact that people were spending time on this package of work while dealing with what was happening in our neighborhoods and in our communities, while dealing with our own kind of work uh, that we're doing external um, to committee work. Um, and also carrying their own legislative uh, and uh, constituent and other political responsibilities. So um, I want to say, I want to express gratitude to them. And I especially want to express gratitude to our council co-sponsors, uh, especially Council Member Gautier, uh, Council Member Brooks, and all the legislative staff who put their heart and soul into this work. Um, we have a better package of bills than we had uh, yesterday. And we're in a better place to talk to people about uh, addressing some of the most urgent needs, which is to keep a roof over their heads, to find better solutions. Um, and I think we did something really big today, and I want to express my gratitude to everybody. So thank you very much, and especially to you, Madam Chair, on a very uh, complicated and um, important uh, role that you played on the on the committee. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. This concludes the business before the Committee on Housing, Neighborhood Development, and the Homeless today. Um, I thank you all very much for your attendance, participation, and work. Thank you.